please start with the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take roll call. President Edward J. Warner, Jr. Here. Secretary Here. Treasurer Scott Horowitz. Here. Trustee William Pell. Present. Trustee Bruce Stafford. Here. Trustee Ann Walker. Here. We have quorum. Thank you, James. Um, the as the agenda is tonight, we're going to skip around. Uh, we're going to start with the applications for permits first. And then we're going to go into the uh, a report from council, and then we're going to open it up to the public, the public portion, so that way you all can speak. All right, thank you. James, keep a pen. Um, I have an application for uh, for uh, Canal Properties LLC, North Road, Hampton Bays. Um, I'm going to table this one, James. Yes. Because we need to get some more information. Yes. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Second on okay. agreement. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. My yes. Okay. I have two uh, applications that they were fully worked on, vetted at the uh, work session. Uh, both of them are 100% compliant with Blue Book. First one is 2018-155, uh, Anna O'Connell and David Ganocchio, 65, Romano Drive, Hampton Bays, South County Tax Mac number 0900-292-4-23. The um, second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second one is 2018-156, application to Jones Standish, 36 Rampasture Road, Hampton Bays, New York. <coughs> Suffolk County tax map number 0900-320-1-2. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, trustee resolution 2018-157. This is for a bulkhead. Um, the applicant is Suzanne McCooey, 18 Harbor Road, West Hampton Beach, New York, Suffolk County, tax map 905-17-3-37, body of water, Mauritius Bay. We discussed this at work session, and I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second one that I have is trustee resolution 2018-158. Um, the applicant is Kristen Tovich, ten, uh, excuse me, application for Ruth Garabini, 39 Club Lane, Remsenburg, New York, Suffolk County taps, Tax Map 900-380-2-28, body of water is a Doug Canal. We also discussed this extensively at work session. I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Trustee Resolution 2018-159, Trustee re Resolution requiring for any expenditure of excess of $1,000. Uh, I need a second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Trustee Resolution 2018-160, warrant number 12 for 2018 for the trustees, the sum of $13,880.69. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Trustee Resolution 2018-161 authorizes a payment of legal services to Sarkoff Stern LLC in the amount of $9,907.50. I need a second that's on a, that. That's for trustees versus Village of Southampton? That's correct. Trustees versus the Village. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Trustee Resolution 2018-162, it's to set a uh, notice of public hearing for modification of a permit to increase the top elevation of the existing bulkhead 
by 18 inches at the premises located at 17 Bishop Avenue, West Hampton, New York. The, second, um, the hearing will be set for July 16th at 1 p.m. I need a second on second. that. Second. All in favor? I'm going to recuse. I'm going to recuse myself. Too. Two recusals. Two recusals. Aye. We have carried. Vote is carried. What's going to happen now? We're going to have a public hearing. I know that, but is there enough to vote on this? Yes, yes, yes. there is. Yep. I think this guy's waited long enough. <clears throat> Uh, we can, I think we're going to get a report from council. Yes, but I'd like to set the parameters uh, for, for the public portion tonight. Each uh, individual will get three minutes to address the board uh, on any topic that they would like. Um, so that way everybody in the audience can have a chance to talk and uh, get their points uh, across to us. So I would respect that you uh, abide by that. Uh, James Dury, our, our environmental analyst, will be keeping the clock. Thank you. Now the. Uh, there's a report that's going to be uh, coming forward from our new attorney, uh, Martha Reigert. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, the trustees requested that I give them just a little bit of a historical timeline for some of the events on 475 Rose Hill Road, which I know many of you are here in the audience for. Um, you know, so basically what I, I've done is, and I still have research pending right now, but the most basic timeline goes all the way back to 1890 in which the first subdivision map was filed. Um, the existing copy we have is torn so it doesn't say the name of the map or the owner but in 1899 the same map is shown as the plan of Meacox Land Improvement Company's property at Watermill and it shows all the parcels that are in what then in 1928 became a filed subdivision map called the amended map A subdivision of Meacox Park owned by Meacox Bay Realty Company and that was filed as map 174 in the Suffolk County's clerk office. And so from this map is where we see the first conveyance from the Meacox Bay Realty Company to the town of Southampton in 1943. Um, that deed was recorded uh, in March of 1943 and it conveyed from Meacox Bay Realty Company to the town of Southampton for consideration of $750, the southerly 100 feet of lot 67 of the amended, the subdivision map, the amended map A. Um, the town took possession in 1943 and continued to do so until recently, until it was transferred to the trustees in 2018. In 2011, the town entered into a boundary line and access agreement dated June 7th, 2011, between Andrew and Lois Zero and the town of Southampton. So, said agreement was recorded, and one of the goals of that agreement was to allow the Zeros to keep a hedge and certain improvements that were slightly over the boundary line between the two lots and maintain an access point on the easterly portion of their lot and the town lot. Um, to maintain access that the Zeros were able to show had pre-existed and predated the town's acquisition of the property in 1943. That particular lot to the south had been developed as early as the 19 teens and um, they had a pre-existing right of access over the land. So the town took it subject to that and entered into a boundary agreement to allow them to keep that access point and, like I said, a uh, hedge and some small improvements. In exchange for the boundary agreement, the Zeros agreed to um, maintain paving on the property for 10 years. Uh, the Zeros also expressly agreed that use of town property would never be deemed adverse possession. And they also released and quit claimed unto the town forever for all their successors and assigns all rights, title, and interest in the town's property. Under that 2011 agreement, the license could be terminated upon material breach and a failure to cure. Um, or if the Zeros or their successors and assigns discontinued use or if the town um, abandoned the use as a, of the property as a you know, public access point for Hayground Cove. That 2011 uh, boundary agreement forms the basis for the 2018 agreement that the trustees entered into. Um, the trustees became the successor in interest from the town and the Zeros. Um, 493 Rose Hill Road LLC became the successor in interest from the Zeros. Uh, the new maintenance agreement um, in terms of for consideration amended that boundary line of where they could have access in exchange for 
several uh, different responsibilities that would be the sole maintenance of the, so the 493 Rose Hill Road became solely responsible for the maintenance of 475 Rose Hill Road, which is the trustee's property. Um, under that agreement, they agreed to dredge and remove sand from the mouth of the ramp at least two times a year. Uh, the dredged sand would be placed at the southerly terminus of Rose Hill Road for beach nourishment to naturally feed. Um, in addition to that, they were responsible for repaving the parking lot as needed, mowing the lawn, um, and taking care of any seasonal landscaping needs at their sole cost and expense. Um, and also to remove snow in order to allow access to the boat launch ramp. Um, again, uh, so the maintenance, in addition to the, the amended boundary line agreement, there was a maintenance agreement filed at the same time. And that, uh, and that was for a term of 15 years uh, which would automatically renew unless one party chose to terminate. So it was a, it, no other condition other than providing their six months notice, either the town or 493 Rose Hill Road could terminate the maintenance agreement. Um, if there's any conflict between the agreements, meaning the maintenance agreement, the 2011 boundary agreement and the amended 2018 boundary agreement, the 2011 agreement controls. Um, and then finally, we have the quick claim deed from the town of Southampton to the trustees, which gave the trustees ownership. And those are the, that is the timeline and history of the recorded documents on the property and the subdivision. Um, if any members of the, of the board would like to ask me a question. I want to thank you for do, doing the research. I know a lot of people from the public has, have done research also. So, uh, Going forward, we're going to have plenty of information on this property. It'll probably be one of the most researched pieces of property in my time on this board. So I want to thank everybody. And in your research of that 2011 meeting, you, you looked at that work session between the town and the what? We, we don't have posted a video for the work session, but there were two public hearings held at the town board level and, um, and a work session in between in which members of the trustees attended and you know asked questions. Um, but yes, it, there were there were two public hearings held on the 2011 agreement, and the trustees worked closely with the Zeros um, because the town contemplated, even in the 2011 agreement, that the property would be transferred to the trustees, even though the actual transfer didn't occur until 2018. So, so this has been in the works since 2011. Yes, with the trustees in the town. That's helpful information. Who were the trustees at the time? Uh, I didn't research that. Um, I know that from the public. Hearings. Uh, Wayne Bruin discussed meeting with Trustee Havemeyer in 2011 um, to negotiate the during the construction of the Zero House. They had parked vehicles on the town's property and had caused damage to the Wellens. And so, um, according to the testimony that was given at the public hearing, I think it was May 10th, 2011, and then May 24th, 2011, uh, Trustee Havemeyer and the Zeros negotiated an agreement to repave and restore. The property. I was on the board at the time, and I believe John Semler and uh, Eric Schultz and uh, I think I just got on. Trustee Pell. Pell was on the board. I got on in the fall. Could you turn the volume up? We really can't hear. Oh, sorry. Do we have control over that? Yeah. <clears throat> sorry. We had this problem last time. All right. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome. Ed, before we get started, I'd like to say something. Sure, Bill. Um, I want to say thank you for your one coming tonight. Um, it was a struggle to get a night, meter, night meeting. Um, you probably hear, I've been hearing a lot about transparent government and um, open government. And I think we should be more like the town board. I think they meet one meeting a month at 1 o'clock or during the daytime and the other meeting at night. Um, so I'd like to take a poll when people come up, if they do come up and speak, if they would like to see the trustees have more night meetings. That way you can come in and voice your opinion and we can get more information out to you instead of just sitting home and watching TV. Um, also want to answer a question about um, our last meeting. Um, Stafford, Trustee Stafford had a concern of there was no pump out boats in West Hampton. There was one in West Hampton. We had four going that weekend. The one boat did go over to Sag Harbor to back that that one up. This past weekend, we had five trust, five pump-outs boats going. Um, the bay constables are 
in charge of the pump out boats now with us and helping us run it. They step up the plate and hopefully by within another week we'll have another probably seven pump out boats working. We are advertising for more help to run the pump out boats. I'm um, listed on the town's website. And thank you very much for coming tonight. Okay. I just want to make uh, one thing clear about the night meeting. Uh, when Billy brought it to our attention to have a night meeting, it's a lot of lifting and moving in town hall to reshuffle the schedule which we did thanks to the supervisor and the staff so you all could come tonight and uh, not take time out of your busy days um, one thing I'd like to say going forward is as far as night meetings and uh, the trustees we usually do a lot of give and take with consultants and lawyers and stuff like that at some of the meetings so it would be also a cost burden that the applicant would have to bear as far as having uh, their consultant or uh, you know attorney attend the meeting so just bear that in mind too because we do permitting also other than you know public sessions like that so anyhow I'd like to get this uh, meeting underway as far as the public session um, portion of it um, there's going to be a three-minute speaking time uh, James will keep the uh, time for for us and uh, at the end of three minutes I'd appreciate that you didn't uh, just keep talking and rambling on because there's a lot of people in the audience and a lot of new faces and I'd like to hear comments from everybody thank you so um, do we have the uh, list of yeah James you want to call the yep. names Tim Marin um, Tim and Cindy Marin <laughs> So I assume we have six minutes. <laughs> Just get going. No, no pause. You go. Anyway. Got three minutes each. So what we have here is the property before it was changed over here, which was a blank piece of grass with a, with a horseshoe coming in off of uh, Rose Hill Road. Those nice now and then the launching ramp down in here. This is the survey of that particular property prior to the, the now. Uh, this was uh, 100, this was 100 foot on Rose Hill Road. That was what was deeded to the town in 1943 as you indicated. Correct. Okay. This has been working for yay those many years. Uh, one of my friends, Ray Jeminski, has photographs. I can't share them with you because I, I don't know how to do this. But we had probably upwards of uh, 30 to 40 cars in here during ice boating season uh, this past winter. It's the only place that we could launch into the bay. Um, the, the, uh, in the town trustee minutes of November 29th work session, it was indicated that there were approximately 15 parking spaces and about four to five parking spaces for uh, trucks with trailers. So now we come over to here, and this is what's the, the current line. We have approximately 23 feet from this sideline to the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me I'll work over here. Okay. All right. So there's 20, 23 feet. So this we've lost 75 foot here. Okay. And we're down to approximately one, two, three, four, five parking areas for boats with trailers. That's providing, since this is not a marked parking lot that everybody parks in this particular manner. I think it's more realistic to say four. And we have three car parkings. So we had 20 car parking and four truck parking prior to the change with the easement. The easement area is about a, a third of an acre. It's uh, 0.246 acres, 10,711 square feet. And the total area of this whole par parcel is about 7, 0.73 acres, 32,000 square feet. That was, that was 
the whole thing and they've, they've taken away approximately 11,000 square feet with this easement. So we've reduced the parking. Uh, I was in there again this, this afternoon and I was noticing a young man came in. He tried to make a turn here. He damn near jackknifed the, uh, the trailer trying to get it into this parking lot. I'm not sure myself just how effective this is going to be as far as launching. I suspect that anybody with a big trailer is going to have to back down here and, and, and I think they're going to have a problem making a U-turn, particularly if there are vehicles in this location. Two minutes. So, two minutes. Two minutes to go. I'm going to be done. Uh, I find it a little ironic that the town trustees, which were founded based on the Don Gam patent in 1686, are not supportive of the historic aspects of this parcel of property. And in my research, and I won't go into it tonight, I have had been able to find significant historic uh, records pertaining to this parcel of property. So, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know, you, you, if you're going to be a historic board, you're going to use the, the Don Gann patent as your history, then I think you have to reflect back on what the historic use of this property was. I'm more than happy to meet with you and go through what I've discovered. I'm sure that other people, your town historians, could assist in this. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I want to correct one thing on your map. Um, I'm going to approach the podium so I can show everybody. I also initially thought when I started reviewing these documents that this was the boundary. However, I reviewed the meets and bounds of the recorded amended document and I just want to let everyone know the boundary follows see, there are no the boundary follows this. This is the actual boundary. The meets and bounds are published and you know I could gladly call it out for everyone but I stand, I stand correct. So I just I just want to let people know that as they're commenting that this is the actual Boundary line. Huh? Violated. 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 Violated.
the deed 75 years ago when it was purchased by the town. So we would like you to undo this deal. The deal does not smell right to us. We don't believe it's a proper deal. We believe it will be vacated in the court. We intend to do everything necessary in order to get back this land for the public. And we have uh, put together a petition uh, to the town board, but it also goes to this board. And uh, this is a later version than the town board received earlier in the week because there are more names on it now. So this has 345 signatories now calling for this ramp to be undone the way it was and returned to the public. And there are many comments in the back for you to also pay attention to. And I'm glad that given the anger of so many people that uh, I didn't have to edit any of them. The comments are just fine. And I'll present them to you in a second. Uh, I did hear that the, uh, the town, I would like a clarification from the attorney. You said something about a six month quit on this deal. No, no, no. Six months notice. So at the end of the 15 year term. At the end of term. With six months notice, either party can terminate the at agreement. At the end of term. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to use any more time. Uh, you've uh, heard what I had to say. Uh, I accept, uh, I would say that one more thing that this is a wrong thing to have done in principle and that it's a horrible thing going forward as a precedent. For, so there are two big reasons to get this undone and we intend to do it. James, can you have the next name when you get a chance? Yeah. Patrick O'Connor. Good evening. My name is Patrick O'Connor. I'm a resident of Southampton. I am running for the First Assembly District here. As such, I understand the importance of the trustees as to here in Southampton and the neighboring towns. We need to recognize what a great job they, they have been doing over the past several years. I'm interested in the reputation of the trustees. Under the leadership of Ed Warner and with the support of Scott Horowitz and Bruce Stafford, they have safeguarded the public trustee money to assure accountability and transparency to the taxpayer. They have actively engaged in dialogues with regulatory authorities in crafting the Meacox management plan to ensure recreation and commercial interests are sensitive to environmental issues. They have been proactive in fixing the financial structure of the trustees, utilizing 20% CPF for water quality initiatives, free up enterprise revenues to continue public access to beaches by hiring non-conflicted counsel, get historic, repeat historic legislation to Albany to fund trustees independently, see to the Ponquag Bridge fishing pier project, he help adequately equip bay constables to protect marine resources, modernize the office functions. They still clean up problems inherited from previous trustees, such as the sand sale issues. Look how much the trustees have improved over the past few terms. But if you want to throw out the baby with the bathwater uh, concerning what had been said at previous meetings, uh, rather than adjust uh, the unanimously passed Rose Hill Agreement, they would jeopardize all that has been accomplished to satisfy their own political agendas. Their own recollection of what has been in the agreement is flawed as they claim the agreement to be. All the trustees saw something good in what they voted on for as it was presented to them in the past. Those who regret that vote now had other options back then. They could have asked for clarification. They could have abstained. They could have voted no. If the agreement is flawed, then simply fix it. And without losing whatever everybody thought was good about it back then. And if any trustees suggest or get someone else to suggest that somebody else should step down, maybe that trustee should resign first to get set a good example for the others and avoid any perception of hypocrisy. In conclusion, as your representative in Albany, I would look forward to working with the trustees to continue the good that they've been doing so far. Thank you very much. Thank you.
next. Jamie Hummel. I am uh, Captain Jamie Hummel. I'm a Bayman boat captain. Um, I've been working on the water here for basically my whole life. As far as this boat ramp goes, I've used this boat ramp, which most people in here probably haven't tried to really launch a boat there. And, and I understand why the trustees did this agreement, and everyone voted for it. And the reason was is because they don't have any money to do this stuff. That boat ramp is kind of borderline unusable a lot of times of the year. This guy's going to dredge it and make it usable. It'd be somewhere we can go. A lot of times we can't go there. So without the money, no, no one's going to get to use this ramp. I mean, yeah, maybe when it ices over. <laughs> but, you know, we use it when it's not iced over, too. There's times we need to go in there. And, uh, you know, the trustees do a lot of good in the town. I, I interact with them a lot. And everyone on this board I've interacted with, and I've agreed with everyone and I've disagreed with everyone. That's how it goes. It just is what it is. We all do different things. We all have different agendas, but I, I understand why you did it. And, and until we get a, a line item on the town with the tax rolls to get money, these agreements are gonna pop up and, and it's not the only time it's happened. So it's gonna happen again. If the guy improves the ramp and makes it really good, I don't care, let it happen. It, it would be good. I, I mean, it, I mean, we launch real boats. They're not little rowboats, you know? And we need to be able to get in and out of there. As a launching ramp, it's important. It's one of the few access points for the bay there. And, it, you know, it's the only way we can get in and out. So I, I don't disagree. I, I don't really like these agreements as a whole, but I understand why it was done. And, and if it comes out good, it will be good. I think it'll benefit everyone in the long run. We just have to maybe tweak it and let it play out. And like I said, we all voted, everybody voted for it, so they must have saw something there that they liked. So, and we know that they wanted the money to do other projects in this town, which will benefit everyone in the town, not just one homeowner and water mill. I think we have a lot of boat ramps in the town. We have a lot of projects in this town that need to be paid for that there's no money to pay for. So unless we're going to have $1,000 clamming licenses and $500 boat ramp permits, something has to happen. So to be naive and put your head in the sand and just say, oh, uh, you know, what is this? Well, it has to, something has to happen. So I don't see any other way around it. So as far as I'm concerned, I think you guys are doing a great job. So just keep it up, all of you, everyone. I, I know all you all, and, and that's it. Thanks. Jim Williams. Good evening, folks. I want to say to Ed and Scott and Bill and Bruce and Ann, thank you very much for your time, your service, your dedication. I mean, you folks have full-time jobs and you give your time to helping us all out here. Um, I'm going to lay off the Rose Hill thing. I'm sure you're going to hear more than enough about that tonight. Uh, my question is, where do we stand on getting more 24-7, 4 by 4 access east and west of the Shinnecock Inlet? We discussed this. I don't know, a year or two ago, and you folks are working on a couple of things. I'd just like to know where we stand on that now. One of the bills that we paid here was for Sockoff Stern. That was against the village um, to start an action to take back the alphabet roads. I met with the town engineer, and staffing is a problem in our office to get a lot of stuff done. That's one of the priorities. We laid out a parking area that on each one of the alphabet roads that could be used that didn't conflict with any wetlands. And that's, so that's, that's being in the work. But as far as west of Poncog, uh, specifically Triton and the Hot Dog Beach area, it's become very difficult to use, utilize that beach because of its uh, width. It's very narrow, it's very steep. And also the town has now taken upon itself to open up Hot Dog Beach in a bathing area. Um, we know that bathing, bathing and four by fouring do mix if it's done responsibly. Uh, we've had conversations with the council people, the supervisor, um, Kristen Dulos. So basically the biggest thing would be for us to get a take permit from Fish and Wildlife in order for us to facilitate any beach driving on a 24 
uh, our basis like we do east of the uh, inlet and over on Peconic. So it's being worked on, it's being looked into, but there's a lot of moving components, as, as you all know, and I, I've said this before, and people that sat in this uh, seat before me have said it, but we're working on trying to, you know, facilitate something that would work for everybody, but it's very difficult. Understood. Thank you. Chip Mayor. Chip Marin. Um, yeah, I'm going to kind of, uh, I've, um, I've spoke with the trustees pretty extensively on this project. Uh, actually, when it, when it was first, um, when this was first proposed as, as an option for, for improvement, um, you know, I, I spoke with um, probably, I probably use this ramp more than everybody else in the room on a per day basis. Um, and and I fished with a fella that's probably used it his his whole life, and he, he's 70 years old. And yeah, the the ramp is a nightmare. And when you're trying to get when you're trying to get uh, 2,000 pounds of fish out of the bay, well, it's it's a disaster. Um, so did the ramp need improvement? Did we did we need we need we needed to move sand? Yes, I 100% I agree. Did we need to go to the extent of giving away? A, a large portion of the of the property to do so, I don't believe so because there's probably, I'd say, 30 or 40 people in the, in 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 Watermill alone with truck with with buckets on that tractor who move that sand twice a year. I don't think you'd have a problem <clears throat> as far as the boat access. As far as the maintenance, it was a weed field. You know, the blessing of a weed field. You don't need pesticides. You don't need irrigation. You don't need all these entities that the trustees should be trying to prevent going into the water. So, um, and and quite frankly, the reason I use that ramp so much is because it was such a disaster to turn around everywhere else. I've got a really short truck, just so I can try and turn around on a lot of the end of these access roads, and. Um, it was kind of nice just to be able to spin around, back up, and put the boat in. Um, in the fall, this seems to be the only ramp that most of the marinas use to pull boats out at. Um, if you get two or three of those guys, and usually when they come, they have like four or five trucks and trailers at one time, Somebody else that gets down there, there's no way they're going to be able to turn around and back their boat in unless we back in all the way from Rose Hill Road down into the access way. And you know what? Quite frankly, I'm kind of sick of that because now every every driveway in Watermill seems to be getting a gate, so you can't even three point turn a trailer, especially a Mohawk. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous, you know. Um, so I propose that the you know, and I, I don't think this, the guy who owns the house even wanted this to happen. He didn't want all of Watermel pissed off at him. You know, like, he, he came into an agreement that was already in the works when he purchased the house. So I think you guys should do, you know, just for the sanity of... Three minutes, Chip. Okay, I'll finish up right now. Just for the sanity of, and your credibility, I think you should make every effort to make sure this deal gets closed and goes away at a 15 year period. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Chip, let me ask you a question. Have you used that ramp this week? This week? I haven't. I, I can't stomach going down there. I got a call from one of the guys in the Southampton Fire Department on the 11th, and on the 13th, the ramp was cleared. At no charge to the trustees? Cleared? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by right. cleared? They, they moved the sand out of the way. It is. What do you mean by cleared? Oh, no. The sand was removed from the ramp. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need a permit. Bruce, we can't have conversations okay. with the audience. It doesn't work. Thank you. Tom Halsey would have had to clear the same Good for Tom Halsey. Bruce. James. Do I know Halsey? This is 
not easy. Good evening. First, I thank you to Mr. Pell for recognizing the frustration of many freeholders, for acknowledging the need of an evening meeting, and then for making it happen. So, eight weeks later, where are we, and what do we know? We know we've been lied to. There was never a 90-day option clause. There was never we can get out of this whenever we want. And my personal favorite was one of trustees stated that if the homeowner goes one inch over the property line, we can take it back. It was all rubbish. We know this goes back to Anna Thronholst and her involvement with Andrew Zarrow, the former homeowner, a well-connected and politically influential individual. Then passed to Jay Schneiderman, and then for the final nail, tossed to the trustees. We know there was no public meeting. We know neighbors weren't notified. We know official signage was not on the property. We know no one knew about it until after the fact. With the unbelievable haste and encouragement of your attorney, the five of you signed this egregious and unacceptable agreement. You never asked questions. You never reached out to the community. And so now your signature set a dangerous precedent this wasn't rocket science. This was about knowing your oath and plain old common sense. For over 70 years, this property remained the same, untouched, a real throwback to yesteryear, and enjoyed by baymen, paddle boarders, and ice boat enthusiasts. Your maintenance agreement makes absolutely no sense. The other day, I happened to hear an old song which has subsequently become my anthem, not that I was even looking for one. I won't back down, Johnny Cash version. I believe what has happened is illegal against the Donegan patent, not to mention shameful. We shouldn't have to be here defending this outrageous situation. I won't back down, and I'm hoping that others won't either. Elena Loretta. Good evening. I have to say that you did a successful change from the 2011 agreement. Thank you very much. I understand that all of you voted unanimously with the 2018 agreement. Based on what I hear, heard from the uh, Watermill CAC meeting, it sounds like that this homeowner wants to do the right thing. He tried to debunk many of the myths that were projected, some of which I read in the paper, some I heard from other people, from neighbors, whoever. But I have to tell you that I'm very impressed that you've done the right thing. As a board, you are looking out for all of Southampton, and I have to thank you, because that means so much. Whether it's Rose Hill Road, a ramp here, a beach here, access, dredging, you've done the right thing. Uh, now that you've brokered this agreement with this adjacent homeowner, what I think some members of the audience didn't quite understand is that you still retain ownership, and that's good. You have an agreement for a lease for 15 years, not ownership. So I commend you for being, you know, uh, having the foresight to realize that. Um, rather than to continue with this hysteria over a one item, a one item uh, problem, I have to commend you on dealing with the other issues in town, okay? I realize that you are shorthanded with maintenance. You only had one fellow for a while, then you had a second fellow to maintain the ramps, the boats, everything at your means. But you've done the best job possible. You were able to get a private homeowner to reach into his pocket and lay out the dough for the dredging and all this maintenance that you don't have the cash for. Why don't you have the cash for? Well, I don't want to have to remind you, but you had some pretty nasty lawsuits a couple of years ago that drained your treasury. 
And now you're on the rebound, and I have to congratulate you because you've done the right thing. By using this homeowner's resources, you've saved the taxpayers a lot of money. You've made the ramp more accessible to Bayman, as we've heard, to recreational boaters, to people like me who want to go down there after I go crabbing and maybe just dump my feet or maybe I'll just bring my sunfish next time, whatever it is, maybe my, my boogie board or maybe my paddle board. But thank you, because that's important. Uh, this, um, this homeowner must be a gem if this is what he agreed to. So I wouldn't be too quick to negate this agreement. If there are issues, it sounds like you can work them out. There are many other issues in town that you have to deal with. This is not the most pressing. Obviously, this should not be your top priority, but I know because of the size of the crowd, tonight it will be. But please, don't lose sight of all that you have accomplished this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joanne Staff. Hello, Joanne Staff, a resident of the area since 2004. Um, here, first of all, to say thank you to the trustees for your hard work and all that you do on behalf of the people of Southampton. It is not an easy job, and it's something that requires a lot of time and energy, and tonight it would seem like um, it's going to be a real battle for you to try to protect what you've tried to do. But first, I want to say that you've done an excellent job in protecting the rights of the entire town. Uh, excellent fiduciary responsibility has been taken, and a lot of successful leadership has been put forth on your behalf for us. You established a tax line, so you have a separate line item for the tax bill. You made an agreement with the town controller to safeguard the trustees' money from frivolous lawsuits and protecting the taxpayers' money. Uh, you have better transparency than you had before, better than previous administrations, uh, and look at how the money is used carefully. Um, you had a great uh, plan for the Meacock's Bay Cuck Cut. You put together a plan to use 20% of the CPF monies and the tax line monies, and thus freeing up revenues for infrastructure repairs for all, and repairs to other boat ramps also in the area. I think there was one that was worked on at Pine Neck uh, down in uh, Sag Harbor. Um, I do understand that uh, there is a signed agreement for Rose Hill as spoken uh, at the last meeting and also by the attorney. And I think that what everyone should do is just take a deep breath, see what happens, maybe put forth some proposals to make some slight changes with the person that has the lease, let him maintain it, uh, which the town doesn't really have the money for. And if there's a problem that arises, revisit the lease and trust the trustees to take care of what they're trying to do and not stand in their way. Thank you. John Bennett. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. In looking at the history of how this came about, I know that the trustees have been taking a lot of flack um, and I don't think it was a good idea, but I have to say it appears it didn't start with you. It was the this agreement with the town. Everybody, whichever you guess, this is the genesis of this uh, sort of uh, swap of interest. Um, so it didn't start with the trustees, um, although I think you made a bad situation worse, honestly. Um, but there should be an inquiry, and the town board should be answering some questions, um, because back in 2011, when this first boundary line and access agreement was entered into, and again, it's strange that you would have something between a private party and a municipality entitled that, uh, there was nothing but a claimed right of access. Um, it's right in the document. The document tells the story. There's a claimed right of access. Claimed right of access, not a deeded right of access, none of that. Uh, I, I wonder, what was the proof of that claimed right of access? Um, what with a series of surveys, aerial photographs, you know, go back to the, some of the agricultural f flyovers go back to the 30s. So there was no, there's nothing but a claimed right of access. And then in the document itself, incredibly, it says there's a new driveway, a new access point. I'm talking about the town agreement, the town board agreement, before you guys even got involved. 
a new driveway, a new block apron, two columns, a hedge, and other improvements. So improvements and a right of access are not the same thing. So you've actually an acknowledgement incredibly in this agreement that in exchange for a mere uh, claimed right of access, the parties acknowledge that all these items, which are more than a right of access, were new. Um, which again has me scratching my head as to why the town board would have uh, entered into some sort of an agreement like this. So I think it's, uh, it's appropriate that the town board should answer some of the questions as to how this came about. I think there sh you should ask them to investigate further the record and what buttressed this claimed right of access, but even if there was some um, arguably colorable claim of access, why was the town board so quick to allow an apron, two columns, a hedge, and other improvements, whatever they were, erected by Zaro extending onto town property along the common boundary line? So I think you guys had to do a lot of explaining. I think the town board should start doing a lot of explaining. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Adam Chesky. Good evening. Thank you all for uh, having this meeting. Thanks for because it's I would never be able to make it during the day. Um, I'm going to say again, I think this is wrong. You, uh, instead of increasing access, you decrease the access. And that's all I'm going to say in the while I stand on this. I don't like it. Uh, I was going to mention a uh, picnic area again. And then my other comment is I just read the Southampton Press this week, and it said that your tax line, that if you get it, if the people vote on you having your own tax line that the trustees that Doug and Patton gets thrown out it doesn't mean anything anymore is that true or not because I read in the Southampton press that it says that uh, when you get your own tax line this board becomes its own entity that's uh, I mean I haven't read the Southampton press article but uh, at no no intent of this uh, taxing bill is meant to curb any of the rights granted under the Dongan patent. <clears throat> As it says, it, if the board changes automatically because it, it's getting its own tax line and money instead of getting it from the town. That's not the intent of the legislation. And again, I haven't read this article, but um, it's something that we can definitely address once we've had a chance to review it. Okay. And the alphabetical roads, I'm going to go to the alphabetical roads. The parking, are you maintaining the roads or is the village maintaining the roads? The village is right now, but we're in the process of working with them and ask. Uh, we had a meeting last this past spring, and they asked us to come up with a list, which we've come up with a parking list, the size of the parking area, which we've been working on with the town engineer, and uh, I believe the plans are almost finalized. Correct, James? Mm -hmm. So we're going to present that to uh, the village board and go over and see what their give and take is on it. But I mean, I think it's a pretty fair recommendation from our board, allowing some. Uh, not a lot of parking, but enough to be access for uh, probably six or eight cars on each road. That's what we're looking at. Okay. And and limited clearing around the wetlands and stuff like that. Okay. It's a very fragile area. I understand that. I un totally understand that. That's why I didn't want anybody driving over the dunes. We, I just wanted to get some access so people can access our bays and our ocean. Yep. It says it right then and there in the, you know, the deed. And uh, one other point, uh, the Pong Quad Bridge boat access, I understand that's a free-for-all. You don't need a boat ramp permit for there. Pong Quad, that's your father's uh, yes. park. Yes, that's a, that's uh, a free-for-all. That's a town Anybody? facility. And there are permits that, because the town has taken money from the state in order to put that park in, you need, um, I believe it's a $10 parking fee. For, but, but it's not a free-for-all. You need a parking permit there. Because I see guys coming from the North Fork with no permits, and they park there. That and, that would be under the parks and the bay constables. Okay, and regulate that. It's not a trustee uh, facility, even though we have J Road there, which is the uh, one of our alphabet roads. Okay. Huh? Thank you. I guess my hey, Fran. Up. Thank I, you. I just want to yes. say one thing about the tax line. How the tax line is right now? There's a lot of loopholes in it, and it has to be. It's a long way before I would approve it or vote for it. Um, it actually hurts us more right now with that tax line, how it's written well, right now. Well, that's that's what I 
think I read in the paper that's, that it said something that I did not see the paper article, but it changes this board no, automatically in the Duggan patent. No, 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 that's it's, no, no, hold on. Let's just slow down for a minute. We're going with more bad information. This, the reality, I'm no, just saying what I read. I understand it, it's what would, would, would change awesome. would be the, the intermunicipal agreement with the town on how the board is funded from the general uh, fund because a lot of the uh, monies that the town collects are for things that are on our properties. There are monies that come over from the town. Um, what Trustee Pell is referring to is the ability for the board to um, uh, uh, pierce a 2% tax cap in the event there were a lot of expenses or we needed to, um, we needed to uh, you know, bond for things. So the, the, the tax line would enable the town to be able to send the money to the trustees free of encumbrances, of political encumbrances or anybody's discretion. If the trustees submitted a budget to the town, okay, that had everything broken down with what we needed to um, survive, to operate, to fix and maintain boat ramps, they couldn't make any alterations to it, okay. This tax line issue wouldn't take effect until 2020 because it would require a extensive intermunicipal agreement with the town so we would have to take an assessment of all of our assets everything that has to be maintained everything that we may have to bond for we'd have to we'd have to work out that situation with the town how we would handle that if we had to do a two three four hundred thousand dollar project it is very complex it does not have any effect on the Donga patent it just has an effect on the ability for the board to get All right, I, I was just, uh, Scott, that's okay. Uh, yeah. I, I was I, I just, just I'm, I was just worried about <laughs> protecting <laughs> our rights you know as what? freeholders of the town. I, I get that, and that's uh, what we're trying to do. Access to our beaches, Ran our bays, and Randy, everything else. I appreciate else. you bringing that up because, you know what, this this is an important issue we're working on. This, this Rose Hill is a very important issue. It is. It is. It, it's a very important issue. But in addition to that, we also have this, this over, overriding issue of the proper funding and proper structure of the trustees, and that is inclusive of the tax line issue. And I think that you know, misinformation perpetuated throughout the community is a bad thing. There are always very complex. So thanks for bringing it up. I'd be more than happy to discuss this with anybody. Just call my cell phone at a more appropriate point in time, or I'll meet with you in town hall. Right. Thank you for bringing thank, it up, Fran. Thank, thank you for having this meeting. Thank thanks, Fran. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Rick Burkowski. Um, yeah, Rick Burkowski, and um, again, thank you for having the meeting. Again, my brain is going faster than my mouth is going to allow me to go, but uh, you guys uh, as a board have done some tremendous things, granted. Um, there's a whole lot of things out there in baseball about uh, you're only as good as your last game. People make mistakes. Things happen. I, it was beyond us how this happened, again, referring to the Road Hill, Rose Hill Road situation. And understandably, you guys have crazy other things to do. This situation, again, being as important as, as it is to a lot of people, um, I, I kind of wish the owner had been here tonight. I kind of thought maybe he would. He did come to the CAC meeting, which says a lot about this man. Um, he has integrity. Um, as Chip said, he doesn't want everybody pissed off at him. He wants to be a good neighbor. Uh, I'm going to take the liberty to say, um, and I, it, this is just my feeling, um, he feels as wronged by the process of how this came about as we are upset about it. He feels a victim of the process, whether it be the town board, the trustees, and so forth. And again, from day one, I have had the idea that you guys are taking a lot of heat for something that was done before you got here. How it was given to you as a finalized project, and I'm not going to get into how you may have thought it was a good idea, but 
understandably, you've got a lot of shit to do in a town. So, I'm sorry, a lot of stuff to do in the town and do what you do. You, you've done it well. This one you blew up, but um, I happen to have a, a chance meeting with the owner at this ramp <coughs> while removing a pretty good size duck blind out of Meacock's Bay. He's a, he's a, he's a good guy. This, this, this undoing can go many different ways, um, and I, people outside of the very close-knit area that is upset about this may not want to follow through to the end to see it as it was prior to this agreement, but there's a lot of us that will, and uh, the litigation costs and things that may, that are going to come to do this. I get the feeling that this man, if could be compensated for what he's already done here, would remove this as quickly as he put it up. Whether there's some sort of compensation somewhere, if there, you can get, listen, the town residents are going to pay for it one way or the other. Um, if there's any CAC funds, if you can beg, borrow, steal from some other entity, I think this guy's a good guy. Uh, in closing, I heard that. Um, I thought a purpose, part of the purpose of this meeting was for the board to let us know the progress that they may have made with uh, meetings with the owner, which I guess some propositions were going to be disclosed or however, um, but that's just it's my just, take on it. This is to take it. public input tonight. Okay. To listen to some, uh, there's quite a few people here that we haven't heard from, so thank no, you. No, I'm done. Thank, thank you. you. Thea Fry. Good evening. Um, it's been one month since I last spoke and nothing has changed with the exception of time. Private meetings, not so private meetings, and quite honestly, the town's disclosure practices are lacking at best and cannot continue. All meetings on the Rose Hill Saga should be videotaped at all times. I requested two weeks ago for all the paperwork, including but not limited to, from 1901 to 1955, recent DEC permits and the correspondence from the, correspondence from the Halsey family to the town and prior owners of the said property from 1901 to present. And once again, I am told how difficult it is to acquire the said paperwork. So my question presented to you tonight is where are the DEC permits and the environmental impact studies from the town? And I say again, where are they? If these permits were not in place at the time of the landscape construction, the contract with Mr. Frankel and his family is null and void. According to the maintenance agreement dated 2-22-18, Section A states that all removal and placement is subject to all federal, state, and local laws. The contract says that the property must be pleasing to the eye, pleasing to the eye of the freeholders because it is ours and the trustees are beholden to the freeholders. Section B of the same states good and aesthetically pleasing conditions. It is not pleasing to the eye, and the contract should be null and void. The amended boundary line and access agreement states that there should be public and amen amenities. Well, what are they? How is the access to the freeholder expanded? The homeowner stood at a recent watermill CAC and told a room of local residents, freeholders, that he did not realize and it would be worked out. And I say to you that hiring a landscape designer is not working it out. Working it out is bringing it back to its original 1928 beauty. Nothing less is acceptable. I believe the 1928 model is the only acceptable model going forward. And lastly, the legal team which worked on this contract with the homeowner should be ashamed of themselves for letting a contract such as this be signed by the trustees. The trust in the legal branch of the town and their ability to execute contracts in the name of their freeholders <clears throat> is troubling. The Rose Hill property should be returned to the freeholders forthwith. Thank you very much. Kevin McAllister. Thank you, Ed. Uh, good evening. My name's Kevin McAllister of Defend H2O. Um, I had represented this to the board the last uh, meeting or two, and I'll, I'll reiterate it because I think it's really important. 
Uh, for me, listening to the situation here, and I know obviously it precedes this board in some manner, but the, the process itself, I think, illuminates the urgency of really inventorying uh, trustee access as well as uh, uh, Town of Southampton access in general. And I have uh, shared with you my view of, and I'll say local knowledge in different locations where uh, accesses are being lost uh, due to encroachment from uh, neighbors. And let's make no, no doubt about it. I mean, there's uh, a suburbanization trend that we've seen over the last 30 years. So I think it's incumbent that the board really inventory the public access. Uh, I would go further. I would uh, urge you to characterize uh, the shoreline in its entirety of Southampton Town with respect to structures. Uh, you've heard me speak about climate change and sea level rise, what we can expect in the next 40 years versus the past 40 are uh, quite alarming. Uh, again, I think at, at the core of, of the trustees and the Dungan Patton, you've always uh, stood for uh, access of freeholders as well as the uh, ecological integrity of these shorelines. So uh, don't lose sight of that. I, I think it would be time well spent to embark on that process. Thank you. Just a comment, Kevin. We've already started to undertake this. This past winter, I sat down with the GIS people upstairs in the town hall and also some of our staffing, and we went over the launching ramps, access points, town, uh, village. There, there's a map in my office that was generated uh, about two weeks ago uh, with all the help of the trustees on the board, any, uh, every, asking them all to give any information that they could to update it in their area. So that's already Excellent. been accomplished. Time well spent. Thank you. Just tell me if there's been any 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 progress made with the owner as to what's going on with this. I'm not going to know. You gave him an answer. Why can't you give me an Because it's a different topic, and I, I was told. Oh, yeah, I know but, it's a different topic. So if you avoid it long enough, it, it'll go away. You, you guys, you basically said that you're going to hire an attorney and take an action. And it's not for me. If anybody on the board wants to comment, they can. But I'm not going to co comment on pending litigation. I, say that. I said the guy was a good guy and he would be negotiating. Right. How, and and you, at the, every meeting, you tell us you're going to have meetings with him and you're going to come to us with a, a progress report. That's I, all. Yep. I personally have not met with the individual. The only time I've ever seen him was at the, uh, the CAC then meeting. Tell us you're going to do it. There are other people on the board that have had conversations, maybe. I mean, I'm not pertinent to everything that goes on on this board. I mean, when they come to me, I give it as information as the leader of the board. But I'm not pertinent to all the conversations. I mean, I believe uh, the supervisor, through Trustee Pell, had uh, said that he met with uh, the property owner. And we, I haven't gotten any information from Jay. He was supposed to come here tonight and maybe give a little. Oh, there he is. Sorry, Jay. I didn't see you. I don't, so, would you would you like to make a any comment? Um, Mr. One, actually, you told me that they met with the property owner. Right. Well, I, I told Trustee Powell that okay. supervisor met with. Yeah, that's it. Uh, supervisor Schneiderman. So the property is in corporate name, but the owner is a guy named Randy Frankel. I believe this is it. I had a meeting with Mr. Frankel. I want to say a week or two ago. Um, get his take on things. I had visited this site because I needed to see what ha what happened there too. I was a bit surprised, honestly, by the extent of the work that was done there. This property was transferred from the town to the trustees um, without the town board understanding that the trustees were going to enter into this agreement. Um, so it is a big change. Um, Mr. Franco I, you know, I had asked Mr. Frankel to, uh, that I would like to see the property put back to the way it was. He explained all of his concerns and went over the agreement that he had with the trustees. Um, but he said that he was willing to work with the town and the trustees and uh, to reasonably modify it. Um, I said, I need to meet with others. I kind of left it at that. I said, let me talk with some of the people who are raising the concerns, um, which uh, Rachel Vernow from the uh, Watermill CAC has been out of town, so I haven't been able to have that meeting. Um, 
so um, I came tonight to hear some additional public comment. I'm trying to get all sides of this issue and then see if I can play a helpful role in, in coming up with something. I have my own questions um, about this transfer. Um, I have my own, you know, I'm working on research as well. Um, so in, I'm going to be discussing this with the town board and uh, assessing our options as well. So um, if you have any particular questions, I wasn't planning on speaking, just came to listen primarily. Thank you, Jay. But, thank you, Jay. Thank I, I thank you for working with us, but I mean, I'd like to have a discussion, you know, my, myself and you and, and the attorneys and sit down. It's not a back room. Well, let's do it now. Let's do it now. I don't. Yes. No, it's this isn't for. This is for us to take all your concerns and he, but listen to you. To us. Nobody. Excuse me. This is this is improper. So. Yeah. Jay, I thank you. I, I thank certainly you. respect yep. the authority of the trustee board. It's also why I supported the state legislation that would allow you guys to act as an independent body. Um, you were created as an independent body, and unfortunately through the years, you've turned into more of a department of the town, and I think that is uh, the wrong approach. I think the future of the trustees is really rests on your independence. You're not always going to make the right decision, but you need to make it as a body that you were created to be, uh, an independent body. And uh, you're accountable to the voters just the same way that I'm accountable to the voters. You make good decisions, you stay there. You make bad decisions, you don't stay there. So that's uh, trustees need to be independent. Thank you, Jay. Jay, I look forward Thanks. to uh, <clears throat> trying to work with you on finding a resolution to this. Uh, I have not seen any official revision to any plan, although I do know that Mr. Frankel did say he was, you know, interested and willing to work with everybody on finding a solution. I agree with you. Uh, when I first looked at it, it seemed stark to me uh, after the construction was done. Uh, and I was anxious to also see, you know, an official proposal. I guess that'll come at a later date. I know he did hire a landscape architect to look at various different options. Um, you know, I'm hoping that there's something that we could all see at some point in time and we could all get around the table and, um, you know, get something resolved here. I really think it's important. Everything Thank is you. on the table at this point. Yes, absolutely. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Thank, you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Okay. <laughs> Ann Thomas. Good evening, Ann Thomas. Um, I have come to implore um, civility, reason, calm. Uh, we live in a beautiful community. It's, uh, we're, we're not in Washington, D.C. or New York City. We share a beautiful area, and uh, we are, we're here because it is so precious and pristine. Uh, the uh, trustees that I have experience with are extremely thoughtful, uh, smart, at attentive to detail. Uh, that's Scott and Ed. And, and all of you work so hard. And I commend you totally on making this kind of time to help uh, appease the, uh, the issues and concerns. Um, I think we have a unanimous approved agreement and that it should be given a chance to uh, succeed or fail. But we're trying to solve a problem that we haven't tried to, uh, we haven't tried the remedy. So I, uh, I, I just say, you know, this is playing out in the media like mud wrestling, and that is just not our style, last I checked. And we should remember that we are all friends and community uh, members. Thank you for your work. You. Brad, have more. Marlene Hairstein from Watermill. I wasn't intending to speak, 
I was hoping to get more information. And I'm, I'm, I'm sad that you're starting, you're turning, starting with 1899. Tim Marin alluded to the fact that there's a lot of records going back to colonial times. And before the colonists even came here, that route was called the Mecox, well, later the colonists called it the Mecox waiting area because you could walk across a bar that still forms there and you could walk over to Bridgehampton. And I once in the 60s, just for curiosity, walked out on that wet bar as far as I could. I couldn't get to Bridgehampton and only was going halfway over. But there was once a regular route there. And then after the colonists came, they continued to use it. So go back to the town records. And I looked it up, and I have a lot of records related to the town. And I unfortunately, I didn't keep the date. But I think the earliest that I come across it was 1666. They talk, talk about the Meacox waiting place. So at the meeting when you came to our CAC, you talked about this wasn't a park, and you had the right to sell it. I think under New York State law, or lease it rather, under New York State law, you can't do a lot of these things with something called park. And you said there was no resolution making this a park. There was no town resolution. Well, you know, some of our records go back to colonial times, and a lot of things didn't have to be a resolution. It was just a right of way that was there. And it was colonial times into American times. And so there's always been a way to get out that way. And someone alluded to the fact about their fishing boat, and most people here didn't use it because they're not fishing people. Well, my husband and I would go down with our car in a trailer with a sailboat on it, and later a sunfish, and later a canoe, as we couldn't handle the other bigger uh, boats. And we went down there with my husband's ashes to spread them in Mecox. And that is a place that my kids go down there. And then my grandkids went down there, and we shoved them off in a canoe so they could get to the beach, because it was a fun thing to, to paddle to the beach. So it's used by a lot of people, and there isn't enough. I went down there with all my grown grandkids, and they agreed there is enough parking down there for the things that we were used to doing there. So I think your hearts were in the right place. I really believe that. But I think the brain power wasn't there. And I'm not necessarily, I'm not necessarily saying your brain power, but you had attorneys helping you, and they did not research this well enough. Going back to pre-Columbian time, uh, colonial times and colonial times, that has been a right of way. And I think you, you, would, you should have, as trustees, preserved that for not just watermill people, but other people. Thank you. Thank you. Southampton. You know, uh, there's people that are speaking here that I don't think they know the whole story of what's going on. And, you know, this group has been very civil. And you guys told us that you would have answers for us. This wasn't another meeting for us to reiterate everything that happened. You said you were going to have answers. And every time we ask for an answer, uh, we'll have a meeting in the back room again. That's why we're here. You know, these meetings have to stop in the back room. You know, because Scott Horowitz's uh, answer to everything is, we could have a meeting. You know, him and whoever else wants to go to the meeting. And that's wrong. That's why we're here. And that's really disturbing. You know, and this, this guy, you know, you want to make him out to be a good guy, all right? But he hired an attorney that was connected, okay? He shouldn't even, the town attorney shouldn't even be speaking to the attorney he hired because he's on the ZBA. I thought that was against the uh, ethics board. I thought if you're getting a paycheck from the town, you couldn't interact. It says it in the ethics rules. So what is that? 
You know, this just goes on and on. And you want to make up some, this is not a 15 year lease. This is a 30 year lease, okay? It's 30 years. So why are you saying it's 15? What, you think the guy's gonna say, no, I don't want it anymore? I mean, come on, this is, that's a lifetime lease. No, it's not? I read it. Tell me where the out is. We, we can adopt a, a law. We could yeah. adopt a law into the Blue Book regulations that eliminates that immediately. That's not what it says. Where does it say that, Scott? We have six months on either side of this. No, no, either. no. You have six months to, for him to cure. No, we, yeah. we, no, no, no. we could adopt a law in Tell, the Blue Book regulations. Me. We could adopt a law in the Blue Book regulations that says that this will not be continued. Yeah, but he's it, not going to give up the property. It, it, he's it, not. And the other thing is, you know, you know, Jay Schneiderman is here. Did he know that this survey was started when he was in office? This was started in like August of 2017. Did, did the town board know that? He doesn't know anything about it. So were you guys pulling the strings on this? Who was doing this? And that's why it's disturbing that you don't want to let Jay Schneiderman say anything. I mean, I, he doesn't lie. I mean, he's going to tell us the truth about what he saw. And I, I think that's really wrong. And I think he just wasted everybody's time tonight by doing this. Because we came here for answers. And he was ready to answer the question. He had, he had the floor. He could have But you told him not. You said, no, no, this isn't the forum. You just said that. You don't have anything. So I mean, if you guys aren't going to answer us, why are we coming here? Because at the last meeting when you came, everybody asked for a night meeting. We worked on a night meeting to have everybody come here so they wouldn't be taking off from work. Uh, Trustee Powell wanted to have it. There was a couple board members that wanted to have it at the next meeting. I said, why don't we give it a little bit of time so we can get something done. In the world of getting something done, it takes time. It takes but you got research. nothing done. I, I don't have a plan in my hand to present you did you. this in a month okay and in two months you can't even get an answer you did this this is the world's fastest project in southampton town by far i can, it it took me six months to get a chair i mean come on all right thank you for your comments thank you ladies and gentlemen my name is mark keenan i've uh, been a resident of deerfield road and watermill since 1983. For the last 10 years, I've been spending half the year in Arizona, the wild, wild west. And I come back, and in the Southampton Press, I read about this. And I just wanted to give you, hopefully, the benefit of my concepts uh, as a lawyer. Uh, it shocked me. This is a democracy. You are selling are moving or transferring public rights to a private citizen and not giving the public notice so you can hear them. I've heard in the Southampton Press, and I may be wrong, that when this problem first came up, some of you may have had a different point of view if you had known of these problems. A court of law is going to listen to that. I can tell you, I'm also a lawyer, and I was a lawyer in New York for 40 years. A court of law is going to have a major, major, major problem with lack of notice. I just can't understand why Southampton, New York, just couldn't give notice to these individuals who are going to be affected. If you give notice, if I want to subdivide a half acre of a property, you give some kind of public notice of what's going on. Why can't you do it here? That would have resolved a lot of the problems. Thank you. Watermill, New York. Uh, I've been here to almost all the meetings. I only missed one because of work. And thank you for, Bill, thank you for really pushing this nighttime meeting because us that don't get paid to be here during the day, it makes a lot of a difference. And everybody is just entirely confused with the situation. 
I, just like many other people, thought that we were going to get some answers here that we've been trying to get for the past two months, coming to meeting after meeting after meeting and told that we were going to get talked to, which has never happened, maybe in little bits and pieces, but we're still nowhere. We, we have no knowledge of what's going on. And then the cherry on the pie was this morning on WLNG, they said the meeting was at 1 o'clock. So a couple people called and they said, why does it say one? They said it's a nighttime meeting. They said, oh, a lot of people are calling us. We, you, the trustees told us this morning it was at one. And I just find that very interesting. Not from our office. And just all the connections with what's going on behind closed doors, lack of communication, I just don't understand how we should be trusting you guys. I mean, trust me, I know that it's a very difficult job. I have the utmost respect for you guys doing it by far. However, there should be communication. There should be some answers. We shouldn't just sit here talking to you guys with the option of responding here and there with no conversation at all. It, it's not, not fair and it's definitely not trustworthy. So, I mean, that's all I have. I and mean, there's a lot more I could say, but I'm just gonna bite my tongue. And I'm sorry that it's hitting you guys so hard, but this is hitting us even harder. Fred, it looks like you're up. Yeah, I go next. Unless you want. My name is Ray Jaminski, lifelong resident here in Southampton, born and raised here. And um, I've come to every meeting and I look at this as to how this does, how this <clears throat> took place and what was beneficial by losing all of this property here to that landowner to benefit him and him alone. We have a ramp. Uh, but it didn't do anything for us. It made everything smaller. We ice boaters can't get our boats in there. I have photographs that I can share with you on my cell phone. But it didn't do anything to benefit the local people. It only benefited this guy right here. That's it. That's all I got to say. No benefit to the local people at all, other than that homeowner. Thank you. Here I am. Good evening. <laughs> Fred Havemeyer, Bridgehampton. You've heard me, seen me before. Uh, wherever Jay is, Jay's right there. I spoke at his meeting the other day. Uh, I think it's very revealing that we all came here tonight to discuss this issue and hopefully to make some headway. Instead, what are we faced with? A pushback from the other side. Did everybody notice that? All of a sudden, there's a pushback. So instead of you kind of like saying, hey, we're going to go somewhere, it's like, oh, we're going to prove we're right. Uh, that's not the issue here. Let me read from the public record. This is the town trustee, town board meeting, uh, January 10th, 1943. It's a document where Robert Hubbard, who was in your position at that time, Eddie, he was the president of the trustees, advocated for a purchase of a piece of land. That piece of land was to give uh, public access use and to add, uh, to aid the inhabitants of the town to enjoy the products of the waters of said Hay Ground Bay uh, for public access. That's this piece of property here and Hay Ground Cove. Uh, the purchase of the property, as Jay Schneiderman knows, I made it very clear at the town board meeting, was for access to the public and it was also for public use entire public use, not the frivolous pursuit of a mega homeowner turning our public property into a, an ornate entrance for their mega estate. That's immoral. It's a criminal thing to do, to give our land away so some guy with a lot of money and influence can have what he didn't have, a beautiful entrance to his huge house. 
The lawyer in the back there is nodding his head. He understands exactly what I mean. This is a travesty. I don't care how many people you stack the room with uh, playing your own violin. It doesn't change the facts one bit. This stinks from the beginning to the end. Let's cut through all the BS and let's solve this problem. Get rid of this in 36 hours with one payloader and one bulldozer, put it back the way it is, and allow the people to enjoy the property that is theirs and that they should be allowed to have full use of for recreation, for picnicking, for parking for events, for everything else, and not this tightly constrained little area with a 16-foot road going down to a pile of broken clamshells that would tear the soles off anybody's feet. I mean, it's just the idea, uh, some of you, Jimmy Hummel and a few others spoke about, oh, the ramp is usable now. That's a little tiny dredging process. The five of you with shovels could clear that out. <laughs> I mean, this whole thing is ludicrous. You guys have to pull your- Thank you, Fred. I appreciate I'll it. be through in a minute. You have to pull your, your drawers up and get serious about this. Stop stringing us along. Stop bringing in another lawyer after the other lawyer failed and get something done. Get rid of this thing. Give us our land back and prove to us that you're decent, worthwhile public officials. Thank you. You've had your three minutes. Yes, John. I, I already started. I'll be, I'll be very quick. When, when there was a claim of access here, that's just a claim of access. That doesn't mean a claim of sole access. In other words, this guy's right to use it only. So that claim of access, I, I don't know what the proof was, morphed into this. I, it doesn't make sense. But in any event, has anyone just suggested to the guy, we'll pay you for all the improvements you did here remove them and put it back to this because he did rely John, on I think we're working on it. That's, all, that's what we're trying to say. I don't have the actual change in my hand. So until something comes forward, which I'm glad to share with everybody here, until then, I can't say any more than that. I mean, I reached out to everybody in the community to have meetings, to get input. I appreciate everybody coming here, taking their night to come sit and give us a presentation, your opinions, thank you very much. Like I said, if I could have scheduled a meeting and knowing to have a plan in hand or an answer in hand, I would have loved that to present to everybody tonight. So I, your time is very dear and I appreciate it. Thank you. No one else is in? No one else has any comments. I would motion to close. Uh, I'd just like to say, ask one thing. Um, President Warner, when can we have another night meeting to discuss this more, to find when all the ducks are in a row, like I heard before, so we have some type of answer to give the, to these people? All you've got to do is get a hold of Randy Franco and have a meeting. Nobody's reached out to the owner. Obviously, nobody's reached out to the owner. Has Bruce? I, 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 uh, I, I had a meeting with him. Sometimes okay. people go back. He's there. All right. Th thank you. Uh, Jay. It's not true. It's not true. Nobody on the board has. Uh, excuse me. Thank you for your comments. If no one else has any more comments, I'd like to close the meeting. Ed, Ed, you did not answer my question. Bill, I don't know until I get the answers. And okay. at that time, I will gladly. Have a night meeting? Have an, uh, yeah, if, if it's okay. town. So I want to know that you available. said that you agreed to have a night meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I'll second your motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.